In our previous labs, we have studied the anatomy of members of the animal kingdom. But now, we turn our attention to members of the plant kingdom. Why do certain plants bloom and thrive in one location, but shrivel up and die in another location? Life on Earth would be difficult, if not impossible, without plants. Therefore, it is important to know what factors affect plant growth. For this lab, we will perform three separate experiments to determine how important light, water, and nutrients are to plant growth. Plants use photosynthesis to produce their own food, but for photosynthesis to occur, plants need to obtain light, water, and carbon dioxide from their environments. Certain nutrients are necessary for healthy plant growth. These nutrients must be obtained from the soil or water surrounding the plant. For each experiment, we will begin with a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an assumption that attempts to explain a scientific observation. To test a hypothesis, a researcher experiments with certain variables to determine how those variables affect a particular outcome. Variables are factors or conditions that can be controlled in an experiment. In the first experiment, we will test this hypothesis. Plant growth is proportional to the amount of light a plant receives. In other words, as the amount of light increases, the amount of plant growth should also increase. The variable for this experiment is the amount of light, which is measured in hours. The outcome is the growth of the plant. We will record our observations, such as the size and color of the leaves and stems, and we will record the average height of the plants. Since the metric system is the universally accepted system for laboratory experiments, we will measure the plant height in centimeters. We will use four groups of plants. Each group of plants will receive the same amount of water and nutrients, but the amount of light will vary. The first group, which we will designate Group L1, will receive four hours of light per day. Group L2 will receive 12 hours of light per day. Group L3 will receive 24 hours of light per day. Group L4 will receive no light. In any laboratory experiment, one group is designated as the control. A control is the group that does not receive the variable being tested. A control is used as a basis for comparison of the other groups. For this lab, you will need to record your observations in a notebook or on separate paper. This will be your lab journal. Set up your journal similar to this. Be sure to allow plenty of room to write your observations. Pause the video while you set up your journal. In your lab journal, write down the hypothesis for this experiment. Remember, the first hypothesis is, plant growth is proportional to the amount of light a plant receives. Also, write down your prediction, which is the group that should show the most growth according to the hypothesis. We have monitored the growth of each group for three weeks to test the hypothesis. As you watch the video, Write down your observations about each plant group for each week. Describe the plants in each group. Are they green and healthy? Or are they brown and withered? What color and size are the leaves and stems? Do the plants have any flowers? Also, include information about the average height of the plants in each group. As you observe the plants, Keep in mind which of the four plant groups is the control for this experiment. Since group L4 will not receive any additional light, it is the control. Observe the four groups of plants at the end of week one. Notice that the plants in group L3 look the healthiest. Their leaves and stems are larger and greener. The plants in group L4 do not look healthy. The stems are white, 
and the leaves are yellow or brown. None of the plants in any group have produced any flowers. Record your observations for all four groups in your journal. Now, let's compare the average height of the plants in each group. Notice that the plants in group L3 have the tallest average height. The plants in group L4 have the shortest average height. In your journal, record the average height of the plants in each group. Your journal entries should look similar to this. Observe the four groups of plants at the end of week two. Record your observations in your journal. Compare the average height of the plants in each group. Record the average height for each group in your journal. Your journal entries should look similar to this. Notice the differences between what you recorded for week one and week two. Some of the plants in groups L1, L2, and L4 appear to be dying, but the plants in group L3 are taller and healthier. Observe the four groups of plants at the end of week three. Record your observations in your journal. Compare the average height of the plants in each group. Record the average height for each group in your journal. Your journal entries should look similar to this. Notice the differences between what you recorded for week two and week three. The plants in group L1 are still thin, but they did grow. The plants in group L2 have larger leaves and thicker stems. The plants in group L3 are the healthiest and tallest plants. The plants in group L4 are dead. What can we conclude after this experiment? Did our hypothesis hold true? In this case, we see that as the amount of light increased, the amount of plant growth also increased. So our hypothesis is valid. Record your conclusion in your journal. In a research situation, we would repeat the experiment many times to confirm the hypothesis. Then, we would propose a theory to explain the results of the experiment. A theory is a proposed explanation for a scientific observation that has been supported by repeated testing. If an experiment does not confirm the hypothesis, the researcher should begin again with a new hypothesis and then conduct additional tests. This process would be repeated until a hypothesis was confirmed. In this second experiment, we will conduct a test to prove or disprove this hypothesis. Plant growth is proportional to the amount of water the plant receives. We will use four groups of plants. Each group of plants will receive the same amount of light and nutrients but the amount of water is the variable. We will measure the amount of water in milliliters. The outcome is plant growth, which is again measured in average height. The first group of plants, which we will designate group W1, will not receive any additional water after the seeds are planted. Group W2 will receive 1.2 milliliters of water per day for each plant. Group W3 will receive 2.5 milliliters of water per day for each plant. The final group of plants, group W4, will receive five milliliters of water per day for each plant. Pause the video while you set up your journal for this experiment. In your journal, write down the hypothesis for this experiment. Remember, the second hypothesis is Plant growth is proportional to the amount of water the plant receives. Also, write down your prediction, which is the group that should show the most growth according to the hypothesis. As before, we have monitored the growth of the plants for three weeks to test our hypothesis. As you watch the video, write down your observations about each plant group for each week. Which plant group is the control in this experiment? Since group W1 will not receive any additional water after the seeds are planted, it is the control. Observe the four groups of plants at the end of week one. Notice that the plants in groups W2, W3, 
and W4 all appear to be healthy, but the plants in group W1 never sprouted. Record your observations for all four groups in your journal. Let's compare the average height of the plants in each group. Notice that the plants in group W4 are the tallest. It appears that our hypothesis may be valid. In your journal, record the average height of the plants in each group. Now, observe the four groups of plants at the end of week two. Record your observations in your journal. Let's compare the average height of the plants in each group. Notice that the plants in group W3 are now taller than the plants in group W4. Perhaps we need to reconsider our hypothesis. In your journal, record the average height of the plants in each group. Observe the four groups of plants at the end of week three. Record your observations in your journal. Compare the average height of the plants in each group. Record the average height for each group in your journal. Your lab journal for this experiment should look similar to this. Did this experiment confirm the hypothesis? Plant growth is proportional to the amount of water a plant receives? The plants in group W4 received the most water, but they are not the healthiest plants. These plants received too much water. It appears that plant growth is not necessarily proportional to the amount of water the plant receives, and that too little or too much water can be harmful to the plants. Record your conclusion in your lab journal. In the third experiment, we will test this hypothesis. Plant growth is proportional to the amount of nutrients a plant receives. Nutrients added to the water or soil around a plant are called fertilizers. Fertilizers often contain compounds of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other elements. The fertilizer we are using for this experiment is in the form of pellets. We will use four groups of plants. Each group of plants will receive the same amount of light and water, but the amount of fertilizer is the variable. The first group of plants, designated as group N1, will receive one pellet of fertilizer per plant when the seeds are planted. Group N2 will receive three pellets of fertilizer per plant when the seeds are planted. Group N3 will receive six pellets of fertilizer per plant when the seeds are planted. Group N4 will receive no pellets of fertilizer. Pause the video and set up your journal for this experiment. In your journal, write down the hypothesis for this experiment. Remember, the third hypothesis is, plant growth is proportional to the amount of nutrients a plant receives. Also, write down your prediction. Which is the group that should show the most growth according to the hypothesis? We have monitored the growth of the plants for three weeks to test our hypothesis. As you watch the video, Write down your observations about each plant group for each week. Which plant group is the control in this experiment? Since group N4 will not receive any fertilizer, it is the control. Observe the four groups of plants at the end of week one. Notice that the plants in groups N1 and N2 appear to be the healthiest. Although the plants in group N1 did not receive as much fertilizer, there were nutrients already present in the soil. Record your observations for all four groups in your journal. Let's compare the average height of the plants in each group. Notice that the plants in groups N3 and N4 are not as tall as the other plants. Our hypothesis does not seem to be valid. In your journal, record the average height of the plants in each group. Observe the four groups of plants at the end of week two. The plants in group N2 are the healthiest, tallest plants. The plants in group N4, which received no additional nutrients, are not looking healthy. Even though the plants in group N3 received more fertilizer than any other group, they appear to be dying. Record your observations in your journal. Compare the average height of the plants in each group. Record the average height for each group in your journal. Now, observe the four groups of plants at the end of week three. 
Record your observations in your journal. Compare the average height of the plants in each group. Record the average height for each group in your journal. Your lab journal for this experiment should look similar to this. Did this experiment confirm the hypothesis that plant growth is proportional to the amount of nutrients a plant receives? The plants in group N3 were given the most fertilizer. According to our hypothesis, they should have been the tallest plants, but they were not. In fact, those plants died. The tallest plants are in group N2. More study is needed, but from this experiment, we would conclude that plants need a certain amount of nutrients. Too little or too much fertilizer can be harmful to plants. Record your conclusion in your lab journal. From our experiments, we can conclude that all three factors, light, water, and nutrients, are essential to healthy plant growth. But growth is not always proportional to the amounts of the variable received by the plants. We can also conclude that too much water or too much fertilizer is harmful to plant growth. In our next lab, we will examine some of the properties of chlorophyll and photosynthesis. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs>